Hey guys, it's your boy Nistro here, and we're back. And something that's been on the back of my mind for months, but I have never really theoried out until now. And it was with the reveal of this card called Master of Ham. This was revealed a few months back as it's a level 5 fusion that basically says if it's fusion summoned or flip face up, you get to summon a flip monster from hand or deck in face down defense. So this is an instant fusion target that grabs any flip effect monster from your deck into face down of defense switch. Now, obviously it doesn't say flip effect, it says a flip monster, but all flip monsters are effect monsters by default because it wouldn't make sense if they weren't. And so this was really interesting. I really thought like, oh wow, this is a new starter for like Shadow, right? Because if Shadow summons Winda with instant fusion, Winda just gets destroyed at the end of the turn. And then hopefully you get to add something back. Like you do get a body, but that's about it. Whereas Master of Ham, gets you a monster from deck and then it could then uh be used for a potential link summon and if you make it with instant fusion you're not using your normal summon to make it so you could potentially use it for a number of things right uh because it's an earth it could be used for like a shekinaga and so i was like okay that's interesting but then phantom nightmare came out and i physically was holding master of ham in my hand and i thought i could probably take this deeper right because i was reading back through all the new flip cards that they made for both the tcg exclusive and the main set stuff from phantom nightmare and i'm like there has to be a deck in here somewhere right so i started from the top i looked up every flip monster in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, and i thought okay well what are some of the best flip monsters in the game right now shadows are obvious right every shadow is a flip monster and if the game was a little slower shadow could still be considered a viable deck unfortunately the way the game is now it's it's a little tough for shadow to keep up but once they get their rhythm going especially now that construct is back at three the deck is very competent and with stuff like schism and winda i'm sure Sure, there is a low to the ground control build out there that could probably still be viable i'm not too sure so yes shadows were my initial go-to thoughts but then i'm like well i kind of want to see what other flip monsters that i could get access to and then i immediately start to think wait a minute sub terrors right so we had guru control be a deck for a while with things like uh, access to red ice dragoon and sub terra fiendus which could be uh basically once per turn negate you use fiendus to negate something and then use guru to book a moon your opponent's monsters so that it could constantly flip back up search another fiendus and then book a moon itself again during your turn that was basically what guru control was in addition to the fact that you you got to activate cards like red ice fusion because Red Ice Fusion states you can't normal summon or special summon the turn you activate this card, but you can normal set. That doesn't stop you from normal setting. So you can set a monster, summon out Dragoon, pass turn with a bit of back row. Then, you know, Dragoon can be your negate and something of a Towers, like a Towers-esque negate. It's definitely more of a Towers back then compared to now where we have a lot of ways to deal with cards that can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects we still had kaijus back then so it wasn't like completely unbeatable and i think kaijus were a lot more viable guru control was in its peak anyway so it was kind of just like a rogue deck that existed due to the existence of red eyes dragoon so this was like one of the stronger flip decks to exist uh, that is that wasn't particularly an archetype now although there is a subterra archetype that is based around flip cards i don't think a lot of them really have strong effects on flip summon there's one that's a foolish burial but they kind of all have this weird effect if a monster you control is flipped face down while you control no other face up monsters right i don't think it would work because we would have to be able to flip everything down at once and in an age where link monsters exist it just doesn't seem very viable although a lot of the subterra monsters seem to have interesting effects they just don't seem to be effective in a more generic flip deck and the next archetype that i stumbled upon was the prediction princess and prediction princess i specifically remember this particular ritual monster prediction princess terror ray because it's tarot like tarot cards and then ray um and she can not only revive flip monsters from grave during your end phase but she can also like quick effect either flip up or flip down a monster on field so she allowed you this like continuous loop of flipping up and flipping down and you mix that with like empty jars newest card pot of the forbidden because pot of the forbidden is level nine the ritual is level nine so you can tribute uh, pot of the forbidden as the entire tribute for the ritual ritual brings it back face down during end phase opponent's turn you get to flip it up and then get to resolve basically any banned card in the game well not all of these are banned but you get to resolve either pot of greed um giant trunade 
Raigeki or Delinquent Duo. And if there is a more consistent way into it, I'm sure the deck would be a little more popular. And come to find out, it, it is pretty good. Especially thanks to the new card prediction pr princess, Biblium Moose, uh, which I will call Bibble from this point on because uh, not only is that funny, but she's also holding a giant book, so I think it's appropriate. So on flip, she can add a prediction princess and any ritual spell from deck to hand. So this is in some ways even better than a um, pre-preparation or preparation of rights because um, this ritual is level nine. So we're gonna need something that isn't regular preparations because that's only level seven or lower. And the better of the two prediction princess ritual spell cards is, uh, or the one that doesn't mention a prediction princess monster at all. So. I'd much rather search this one than search the other one. But if in a perfect world, I'd probably play both. But this is just completely conceptual at this point. And the final archetype that I figured could work pretty well in a flip deck is the Crawler archetype. With the card out of Pen Over the Elements, Crawler Soma, which I thought was a really interesting card, the fact that this came out in the same set as Sprites, and rarely anyone tried to make this card work in Sprite was kind of a sin in my eyes because you could take any face up monster control, summon Soma, and then put that monster in face down defense, right? Because it's because crawlers are a bunch of flip monsters, a bunch of level two flip monsters, right? And so what Soma could do is that Soma could lower its level, it's level six, but it can lower its level by up to four and summon crawlers whose level equals its number of levels reduced so the fact that you could reduce it by up to four not only make it level two but some two more level two monsters from hand deck or graveyard kind of make this card a staple and the fact that this card has never come in any rarity but common in power of the elements and has never been reprinted either is kind of a sin like this should have been like a high rarity in the megatons although it's not like the megatons would have needed another dud that people weren't going to use anyway but still, I think this this was a really good card that could have been reprinted in the tins um, because of its ability to just spit out three level two monsters. And that was back when Sprite Elf was still a thing. Um, I'm sure there could have been some crazy combos with Crawler Soma as the starter, you know. But the only issue was that uh, you couldn't make an Apo after some like you were very susceptible to a nib because it summoned like three monsters at once. So you were very susceptible to Nibiru after going into it. But in like any other deck, uh, like there, I even theoried this out in like Earth Machine, where if you book a moon your own Harvester, you can still tribute it with whatever Earth Machine you summon from hand and then link all of them off to go into Appalooza. So either you bait the Nibiru on your fifth summon or you get a free Apo right um still it's an amazing card for flip decks and the crawler level twos the fact you can dig them out of graveyard is just perfect and it also really helps that master of ham has the effect where it can banish two flip monsters from your field or graveyard to summon itself back in face down defense so that's actually really helpful those were all of the archetypes that i figured we could use with a card like master of ham if we wanted to get a master of ham flip deck going there definitely are other um, flip archetypes, like the Tadangles, which just really awkward support. They are all worded so awkwardly. And although like Druff over here, I don't even know how to pronounce that, um, can add any flip monster from deck to hand and can also summon himself from hand in face down defense, it's still very weird. And there's like a little thing where it's like, okay, you have, um, the other Tindangles can summon themselves from Grave when a monster is special summoned in face down defense, meaning like if they're already in Grave when you resolve a Master of Ham, they can force themselves back into field. And they they have a funny wording where they say this is not optional. They have to summon themselves back in face down defense when you special summon a monster in face down defense, which is just really weird. So if there's a way that you could like mill these and then mill this trap card where if you have no monsters in your extra monster zone, you can banish this trap from your graveyard and summon three Tendangles in face down defense. 
which is really interesting, but I just think a little too slow for what it is. Um, and then you have cards like W Nebula Meteorite. This was like a killer back in the day because it uh, was able to summon the Worm Victory straight from deck. And although Worms were never like crazy, back when Future Fusion was a card, Worms went really hard because they got to like summon out Worm Zero with like 16 materials. And I believe it like had some crazy effects the more Worms you had in your graveyard. So this was a really interesting card. and. Like, nowadays, like, I think Worm Victory being able to Dark Hole the field is pretty cool. But in a flip deck, I don't think that'll do me much good, right? Clearing my own monsters just to get rid of my opponent's cards isn't really too crazy. But yeah, this support from Phantom Nightmare was so different and new, and it inspired me so much. So I decided to try to see what I could come up with using um, all the flip monsters in the game. And these are some of the combos that I came up with. Starting off, right, we have our very simple Instant Fusion plus Book of Tayo. Now, Book of Tayo um, is just the opposite of Book of Moon, except it's a normal spell card. So it gets to take any monster on field, take a face down monster, and flip it into face, down, face up attack position. If you're an Empty Jar player, you're very familiar with this card. Or if you've ever seen Empty Jar, you know, from back in the day, you're very familiar with Book of Tayo and what it can do. So we start with our instant fusion, we go Master of Ham, Master of Ham gets to summon Pot of the Forbidden from deck, and Pot of the Forbidden we get to Book of Tayo, flip it up, book, uh, and then you get any any of the four uh, effects, which we choose to hand loop for one because it's the funniest one. So now I kind of want to take it to the next level, right? So what if you already draw the Pot of the Forbidden? What else can you do with Master of Ham? Master of Ham can then summon Prediction Princess Bibble. And Bibble can flip up with a Book of Tayo. Bibble can then search the Ritual and the Ritual spell. And it also has the effect where if it's tributed, it actually gets to summon itself back in face down defense. So if you don't have Pot of the Forbidden here, it can actually revive itself from graveyard when it's used for a ritual summon. So it's actually just perfect if you want to continuously gain resources. So we go into ritual of prediction here, and then we get to go, uh, you know, send Master of Ham for something like IP Mascarena. During end phase, Terror Ray gets to revive Pot of the Forbidden from the graveyard. And as I mentioned before, Terror Ray can flip up. Um, monsters during our opponent's turn as a quick effect. So we did that during standby phase. And another thing about this ritual spell is that during standby phase, you can summon a non-ritual prediction princess from your deck and face down defense if you control a prediction princess ritual, allowing us to go into our coin Norma. And coin Norma, whenever she's uh, flipped up, she can summon another level three or higher flip monster from your hand or deck, except she locks us into uh, Prediction Princess effects for the rest of the turn. So I'd probably go like IP into, you know, let's say that this was strong enough to like stop them. We can set it, set our Pot of the Forbidden with a Terror Ray, and then Pot of the Forbidden them again, you know, whichever effect you think is best. And then we can go into something like Deus Ex Crawler is another card that you can summon. And this card is actually a walking skill drain after it, uh, well, not skill drain, uh, because it only stops activated effects, but it's a skill drain S card where after it's flip face up, it does a semi skill drain on the opponent's field for every monster um, that activates its effects. So continuous effects are fine, but if your opponent's monster activates its effects after this card is flip face up and, and stays face up on the field, their effect is negated. So yeah. And then that's also not considering the fact that Terror Ray can special summon back the Pot of the Forbidden next turn as well to, um, you know, then give you the, the, the option to pivot between the Pot of the Forbidden or something else. So now we're going to go through another Master of Ham combo, right? Just as, I, I guess I should have showed this one first, but like, yes, Deus Ex Crawler. Will be, will be flipped up. And if you don't use a Master of Ham for anything, Instant Fusion will pop it, but that's not a big deal. 
But this is basically just to show you that yes, Deus Ex Crawler will negate any monster effect that activates on your opponent's field. So um, that's all there is to that. What if we wanted to take it even further to even further beyond? What can an instant fusion net you? So we're going to summon Magician of Fatefulness from our deck face down and on flip, it can add a spell card from graveyard to hand and then it can special summon another copy of itself or a Magician of Faith from deck in face down defense. So we're going to flip it. It's going to add back Flickatayo and then it gets to add back Magician of Faith. And the reason why that works is because by game mechanics, right, the chain is over when uh, Magician of Faithfulness triggers meaning that um, Book of Tayo will already be engraved, right? So if a flip effect was in the same chain, then that wouldn't work because Book of Tayo would not be engraved yet. But because it's a new chain link, but when the monsters flip face up, Book of Tayo will be engraved already, meaning the Magician of Faiths can trigger. So now we Book of Tayo again, flip up Magician of Faith, and now we get to add Book of Tayo back to hand. So what can we really make with uh, these two Magicians of Faiths? Well, we can go into the Subterra Behemoth Fiendus. Fiendus is really interesting because it has two really interesting effects, right? So first off, during your main phase, you can send a flip monster from your deck to your graveyard if you do special summon a monster from your hand and face down defense to the zone this card points to. So that's what we're gonna do first, right? We get to mill any flip monster from our deck, including shadows, right? And I'm, I'm sure you guys can see where this is going. And we get to summon any flip monster from our hand. Pot of the Forbidden here is just here for the example. It could be any flip monster. Shadow Windy gets to summon any flip mo any Shadow from our deck in face down defense, in which our case we choose Shadow Hedgehog. We can then flip up the monster that we just set with um, Windy. Fiendus will trigger Chain Link 1 here because it's a mandatory effect. And and then Hedgehog will trigger here as well because it gets because it was flipped face up. We get to add a Shadow um, Speller Trap from deck to hand, and then we get to add any flip monster from deck to hand. And now here's where the sub terrors start to come in. We can link into a Borogard Dragon. Now, Borogard Dragon is really interesting because it, you know how every Boro has one effect that cannot be responded to? Well, Borogard Dragon's effect that can't be responded to is its effect is that it can change a monster on the field to face up defense that's including face down monsters so it's basically a free once per turn book of taya or like your prediction princess ritual without needing to actually search the ritual monster so borogar dragon can then flip face up whatever flip monster that you set off of behemoth fiendus or it can flip over something like a Subterra Guru. It's very appropriate that the Subterra monster got us the, you know, Subterra Guru. That's, that's actually perfect. And then um, you can banish two flip monsters from your graveyard to summon back the Master of Ham in face down defense, right? But it, it gets banished when it leaves the field, but it still gets its effect to summon more flip monsters from deck when it's flipped face up. So you guys see where this is going, right? Like we have a sort of like, loop of recursion that gets to constantly go on here simply because we were able to take advantage of master of ham with a book of tayo and any random flip monster in hand. right so subterra guru it i mean to be fair right you're going to play more copies of guru than you are going to play a pot of the forbidden it, it's our opponent's turn we activate Borogard as a quick effect during their turn we get subterra guru guru gets to search Fiendus. Now, um, my take on when you should activate Borogard is once they summon a monster or once they place a card on field. Because once they place a card on field, they can no longer imperm. If they imperm you preemptively, you can just chain Borogard. Borogard can't be responded to, so it's not like they can imperm after you after you Borogard effect, but they can imperm on the flip effect. So to stop them imperming on the flip effect, you wait until they place a card on field and then you borrow guard them. I think that's the best time. Yeah, you can borrow guard, flip up Guru, Guru at Fiendus. Now you have a live negate. And then once it hits main phase, you can do Shadow Schism. And because the Hedgehog and the Windy are in your graveyard, Windy is a Shadow, right? So it's a Shadow, Hedgehog's the dark. So you get to make a Shadow Winda. 
and now they're locked out of playing for the turn or out of special summoning for the turn because uh window was was on field when the, the monster was summoned so assuming that their first summon isn't something like a fenrir you can probably get away doing some big damage fiendus unfortunately cannot remove the monster that it negates so if it is something like a fenrir i would say maybe save your schism fenrir breaks this down pancatrops doesn't only because uh, Winda can't be destroyed by card effects, so. I mean, they can still swing with the Pankatrops. If you really feel confident, like, okay, let's say the first monster that they summoned was Fenrir. You could chain Boroughguard, switch their Fenrir to defense, instead of flipping up Subterra Guru, but then it makes the Schism weaker because then you won't have the live negate, so. Obviously, there are some flaws to the strategy, but it's a flip deck, so clearly there's gonna be flaws, but it's still a very interesting thing, right? And then just to show that the subterror negate works and then it puts guru face down so it can search another fiendus so here comes the real sauce we know that master of ham requires two beast monsters to be fusion summoned properly so what is the only beast monster in the game that actually mentions fusions or fusion summoning it is horse of the floor knights uh sherry from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5ds her support is coming in clutch the cards that were meant to summon out Chevalier de Fleur are now going to be used to make the Master of Ham. We get to summon Horse of the Pearl Knights, and it gets to add a light Noble Knight monster from deck to hand, right? It's Noble Knight support. All of her, like half her deck is treated as Noble Knights for some reason. And the one that we get to add is Noble Knight's Shield Bearer. And so the reason why you add Shield Bearer is because Shield Bearer can banish itself and add a level six lore Wind Beast monster from deck to hand. If you play Crystal Beast, you might be familiar with this card because it searches your Pegasus. And uh, so it's actually a really good starter for Crystal Beast, assuming that you're not worried about getting drilled. But yeah, so Shield Bearer can search Dinotherium and Dinotherium, not great going second. It also should be noted that um, Horse of the Floor Knights can fusion summon with monsters from hand. So if, if you're going second and you don't want to summon the Dinotherium to give your opponent a monster, you can do that. Um, but going first, Dinotherium really rocks because it's a really, it's a free level four body that can just summon itself, right? And now that it's on field, we can use Crawler Soma here to Book of Moon to the, the Dinotherium. And then the Crawler Soma can decrease its level by four, summon two level two Crawlers. Now we get to go into Cross Sheep, right? Because we, we go into Cross Sheep, then we can Fusion Summon. We go Master of Ham, Cross Sheep Chain Link 2 to chain block it from an Ash Blossom. So Cross Sheep gets to revive any monster from Grave. It really doesn't matter which one. And then we get to go Master of Ham to set something like Subterra Guru. Now we get to go into something like Boroughguard Dragon. And Boroughguard, we already know how good Boroughguard is, right? It gets to flip, let us flip up our Guru. Master of Ham can summon itself out by banishing the two crawlers that we summoned off of Soma. And then Guru can Book of Moon itself and another monster. So now we have a live negate with Fiendus, and we have the Boroughguard Dragon to flip up Master of Ham to summon us another flip monster from our deck during our opponent's turn. But this is just the bare minimum. This is only the beginning. So where do we go from here? So, same combo, same start, right? Every combo after this is gonna start the same way. You're gonna hope that you draw Horse of the Flora Knights with Crawler Soma. Now Crawler Soma gets to bring out two more crawlers from deck. We get to go Cross Sheep, Horse of the Floor Knights gets to go Master of Ham. We get our Chain Links going. And now we get to summon Guard Dog. Now, one thing should be noted about Guard Dog is that I know it says it's a flip monster here, but in the uh, TCG, this card has not been reprinted since 2007. So it's been nearly two decades since this card has had a print in the TCG. But it's had an update in the OCG to become a flip monster. This card was not originally a flip monster, it was just a beast slash effect monster that said flip, kind of like Raikou or some of the um, flip monsters from back in the day before they implemented the word flip into the game. So just be wary that um, if you go into Yu-Gi-Oh! Neuron and you look at the official database, it is treated as a flip monster. It does say flip on Yu-Gi-Oh! Neuron. So if someone tries to argue with you like, oh, well, this isn't a flip monster, and you're summoning it off of Master of Ham, right? In case you ever get into that argument, just show, just go on Yu-Gi-Oh! Neuron, show them like, hey, the database says this is a flip monster. So just be wary of that. But otherwise, yeah, we get to summon out Guard Dog. 
and you, you've probably already read its flip effect by the time that I've ranted about um, it being a flip monster, but your opponent cannot special summon for the rest of the turn. <laughs> so we basically gonna go up into the same combo line. We set up our Boro Guard. And during the opponent's turn, we have to flip up our Guard Dog. Guard Dog says, you Ghost Meets Girl for, for, for the rest of the turn. You cannot special summon this turn. <laughs> And the funny thing is that Guard Dog is actually a beast type. So if you happen to draw into it, you can use Horse of the Floor Knights and use it as fusion material in case you get like Ash Blossomed on your Horse of the Floor Knights. So Guard Dog is actually pretty goaded for that. It can be used as both a fusion material and it can be uh, flipped up to stop our opponent from playing the game. And you might want to play multiple just so you can resolve Master of Hand and summon another one. Going to start it off the exact same way. Crawler Soma, uh, Floor Knight. Go into our Crawlers. Fusion Summon. Again, it doesn't matter which monster you revive back. And now we've uh, summoned a familiar face, right? You guys remember Bibble, who is uh, in the video about like five minutes ago. <laughs> Now we get to use Beauregard during our turn to flip a Bibble. And Bibble gets to add our Prediction Princess support. Master of Ham gets to come back. And now we get to Tribute to summon out Terra Ray. Bibble comes back. And, you know, Bibble and uh, Master of Ham are hard once per turns. So it, it, there, there was really no benefit to using... Um, Terror Ray during our turn to flip up one of these because we wouldn't have gotten anything out of it. But now, um, opponent's turn, we get to flip up Master of Ham. And then Master of Ham, during our opponent's turn, gets to dig us for any flip monster from deck. So that could be Pot of the Forbidden, or it can be Guard Dog. And Guard Dog, as we haven't used our Boro Guard yet, Guard Dog will be able to flip up and lock our opponent on a special something for the turn. I don't even think Yu-Gi-Oh was intended to be played like this. Like, you were definitely not intended to flip up monsters during your opponent's turn or before their main phase, right? Because there's a lot of flip monsters out there with just stupid effects like Cyber Jar and Morphing Jar. And now Guard Dog is going to become a threat. Like, maybe not now, right? Because this deck is still very new. It's not doing too much. And it's also very fragile, right? It's not like you're gonna have like multiple routes into these uh, lines, but it's it's some really jank fun. Maybe if Instant Fusion got put up to three, this deck might have some merit to it. Like we might be able to play around hand traps a little better and like make it a little more consistent. Maybe if you like mix it with like super heavy, make a Baron or something before you start your like ham combos. So instead of going directly into the Bibble, this time we're gonna go into the Coinorama. Coinorma. Coinorma. Yeah, that's how it's pronounced. So, we get to go back into. Uh, we get to set Coinorma, summon back our Master of Ham. Oro Dragon, flip up the Coinorama. Coinorma, excuse me. Summon out Guard Dog from deck. Link up into an IP Masquerina or something. And boom. In case you don't feel like playing the ritual, you don't have to, right? It's just that easy. And then you can go up into something like IP. If you want to lock them out of special summoning and then, you know, remove stuff from their field, you can do that as well. That's another option. And now this is the apex of just about everything that we've done here today. So, we've seen the Crawlers, we've seen the Subterrors, and we've seen the Shadows. What if we put it all into one combo? So now we get to go into Shadow Construct. So, um, there are only two Link Monsters in the game that require Flip Monsters specifically. And it is the Subterror, which we showed earlier, and the Shadow Construct. So I wanted to make sure both um, monsters were a part of this combo video. 
because they're pretty good link monsters, but like you never get to some of them because how many decks actually play flip cards, right? Or flip monsters. So we go Master of Ham, Master of Ham sums out Windy, right? And you can probably tell where this is going. We're gonna use Construct to go into Construct. <laughs> and Construct, um, when it's summoned, it gets to mill a Shadow card from uh, Deck to Graveyard. And then uh, Wendy's going to get to summon out Shadow Falco. We could go Cross Sheep here. Cross Sheep's going to... Um... So this is actually really brilliant by me. Uh, you know, sh shout out to me for thinking of this. But, um, I mean, if you've played Cross Sheep before, you already know this. But Cross Sheep triggers not just when the monster it mentions a special summon, but rather when a monster is special summoned to a zone it points to you get to use all the effects in sequence. So it doesn't have to be one of the monsters mentioned, it's as long as something is special summoned to a zone of points to. So because we summoned out Master of Ham to the zone of points to face down, we still get to resolve Cross Sheep because it's pointing to a Shadow Construct. And uh, so I would always recommend if you're gonna go down this route to make Shadows work with the deck, Always put Construct in the middle so that you can always resolve Cross Sheep once you special summon something. So now we get to use Cross Sheep. We're going to revive the Windy here just, just because we can. And then we can Borrow Guard Dragon. Construct gets to add back this uh, Schism. We get to flip up Falco, revive something like uh, Construct. We get to use um, Shadow Construct's Graveyard Effect, which is crazy if it's in grave you can send a shadow card from hand or face of field to the graveyard and if you do special summon it and normally it's like okay uh i kind of forgot that shadows are hard once per turns like these are the original hard ones per turns me being the flip effect player didn't really realize that but um basically you get to make another shadow construct again and if i would have sequenced that correctly i could have gone a lot further we have sch uh, schism for for the window and then we have uh, Master of Ham to summon out another monster. It's like, if you really want this to be a Shadow deck, you can you can make that happen. That's just to show the potential of what the flip deck can do. And now you're looking at a fucking mess, right? But let me go through everything and just explain my reasoning for everything here. We can kind of be on the same page, right? Whirlwind Weasel, it's a beast, it's a flip. So it goes perfect with Horse of the Floor Knights, right? It can be searched off of a Shield Bearer because it's a Wind Beast flip, actually. That's that that's very important. It's a Wind, it's a Beast, and it's a flip. So it can be searched off of Shield Bearer, and then it can be banished from Grave to revive out our Master of Ham in case you have a Book of Tayo or something. Soul and Luna is great because it basically, it, it sucks that it has to target a, an opponent's monster, but it basically has to flip up two monsters on field or either flip up or fit or, or put them down so it's like another way to not only play through a board but to also flip up your monsters right dinotherium we explained red ice fusion as i said earlier guru control is a possibility if you feel like playing the two bricks dragoon could be really good in, in a deck like this because i feel like there will be hands where you're not drawing your engine where you're not drawing one of your seven starters which is like shield bearer floor knight or instant fusion and yeah, there will be times where you just open Shield Bearer and you have to search Floor Knights, and Floor Knights can't really do much because all it can do is search another Shield Bearer, which is a hard once per turn. So I hope that you play enough beast monsters that you can still make a fusion with Floor Knights, right? In case you hard open the uh, Shield Bearer. Hidden City's here because they add the sub terrors, and then Hidden City can actually flip up guru for you i didn't show any combos with it it can help you flip up guru it can add cards that like like the sub terror trap card to help you make guru a little stronger and then it can also negate attacks on face down of defense mission monsters or defense mission uh, sub terror monsters so you can potentially stall out your guru for longer and then fiendus is here I don't know if, like, if someone plays this deck, I don't know if Fiendus would be, like, a 3 of, a 2 of. I don't know how strong the sub-terror stuff is compared to what the what the rest of the deck can do. It's still pretty interesting, right? So Pot of the Forbidden needs no explanation. And then we have Convertible, which is really interesting. It can summon out level 5 or higher flip monsters from your deck on flip. During the battle phase, it's actually a hand trap that sends face-down monsters on field to grave and then summons itself in face-down defense. So I guess... If you're gonna play this, you mix this with like Soul and Luna, 
or like a Book of Moon, you basically get to remove an opponent's monster, even Quaking Mirror Force. If, if they fall for a Quaking Mirror Force or a Daruma Cannon, Daruma Cannon's way better. You like Daruma Cannon them, convertible, send that monster to the grave, summon itself face down, and then on flip, it gets to summon another level five or higher monster, meaning it could summon out Pot of the Forbidden, it can summon out Bibble, it can summon out Deus Ex Crawler, it can do a bunch of stuff, right? Guard Dog needs no explanation. The crawlers, I just chose the four best crawlers, right? So this this one can send a monster from deck to grave, so it's like a uh, foolish burial for free if it, if it gets flipped up. Uh, this one's a MST. This one pops any monster, and then this one adds a crawler monster from deck to hand. You don't need to play four crawlers. It actually, um, as I mentioned earlier, crawler soma can summon from grave. So in real in reality, you really only need to play two of them. You don't have to play any of the crawler links because they just aren't good. <laughs> they aren't really viable for like other flip decks. Like crawler um, links only care about crawlers. Like they don't really help other decks really, unlike the Subterror or Shadow links. So the crawler monsters are cool, but you can stick to two of them. Maybe the, if you do get nibbed, they can summon more crawlers from deck. So I guess that's the one benefit, but they have to be summoned in face down defense. So just be wary of that, right? Book of Tayo, no explanation needed, most broken card when you're playing a flip deck. And then we have this card called Junk Sleep, right? Uh, I didn't know this card existed, but basically when your opponent summons a monster, you can change all face down position monsters so you control the face up attack position. And so that can like trigger all your flip effects. And then during the end phase, you can put everything face down. So it's like a full reset, like a full flip and then a full reset for, for your entire board. So I thought that was interesting. I think maybe it might have a place in the deck, maybe not. Nebula Me Meteorite can, um, again, just like Junk Sleep, change all face down monsters you control to face up, trigger all your flips. Like it can put light reptiles back into face down defense and then it can summon a level five or, or, or higher, no level seven or higher light reptile from deck, which would be Worm Victory or Worm Queen. You got your Octoatics, you got Worm King, which, I guess is cool. Worm Queen. It just summons more worms. Uh, you got your Ogdoatic uh, level eights that are lights, right? So your Aaron and your Curse. Oh, okay, so so the kings are the, the king is the light, and then there's a dark one, but you wouldn't be able to summon a dark one. So really, only Aaron, Radiant Spirit. You could summon, I guess, and then Worm Victory. I mean, sure, you can place a counters, but like you wouldn't play a trap card just to make this. Then we have the Tin Dangle stuff. Tin Dangle, Tin Dangle. The Tin Dangle stuff is like awkward. As I said, like it's just awkward support because the link does like nothing. Uh, okay, if it gains 3000 attack, if you have three or more Tin Dangles with different names in your graveyard, but it has to be including Base Gardener, which I mean, like Base Gardener is decent, I guess, but it's all just like really awkward. I. I there's no other way for me to describe it. It's it just it's just really weird support for a deck like this. So now, as I mentioned earlier, these guys would be able to summon themselves back from graveyard if you special summon a monster face down, which with Master of Ham is very possible. Now that you know, now that we're coming full circle and we understand more of the lines, we know that these are possible, but they're I don't think they're good. <laughs> So in, in like a proper list, I don't think these have a place, but maybe in the future, maybe there is some Tindangle list that will be able to make it, especially since Jurlif here can search any flip monster. Uh, and then unlike the Coinorma, you're not locked into anything, but it doesn't special summon the flip monster, it just adds them to hand. And then being able to resolve the graveyard effect of this Tindangle trap will probably be like a wet dream. Like I think it should be, there should be someone who just tries to actually resolve this, like who plays the flip deck and can actually resolve this consistently. Cause I feel like it's possible thanks to this guy, but it's also like not very possible because these guys are very rigid. It summons itself from hand and face down defense and then it mills, but it says, and if you do special summon this card in face on defense. So it mills first and then it says, and if you do. And the wording, and if you do in, in, in PSCT means that it happens simultaneously. So these these Tindangles, which would which would have summoned themselves from the graveyard, miss timing if you send them off of Jerlif or if you send them off of Behemoth Fiendus, because it says, and send a flip monster from your deck to your graveyard. And if you do, special summon a monster from your hand in face on defense, too, is on this, this card points, too. So these guys miss timing. 
because the summon and the mill are simultaneous so it is not in graveyard by the time the monster is summoned which just you know again makes it really awkward for the deck to work but i believe a tendangle deck is out there somewhere queen norma you guys saw it's definitely not a staple but i just think it's really interesting that it can uh access bibble access uh guard dog well not that accessing guard dog after flipping it is anything special but it can still access to cards and then you can use them for something like a terror ray like if you want to get like a tribute for terror ray like let's say you have these two and you have coin norma you can like just summon the pot just to get it as a tribute summon out terror ray and then end phase bring back the monster and then flip it during your opponent's turn and then it'll have its effect uh, I don't think I need to explain any of the shout all stuff. Um, I do like Hedgehog, Windy the most. I don't think uh, Falco or Squamata are really staples. Um, I'd have to maybe look, maybe look, looking more into their great their effects when they're sent to graveyard would be very helpful because of this um, Subterra Link monster. It makes it a lot more likely that you may send them to grave by card effect rather than flipping them up. But I know Hedgehog and Windy are pretty good together. So these are the two that I think are staple with the Shadow uh, Schism. And then the Shadow Trap cards, they don't really work with other cards. Like you have to like you have to commit fully to like the Shadow stuff to get the full effects, right? Like Sinister Shadow games, you have to mill a Shadow, then Shadows can be flipped face up. Shadow Incarnation, you have to banish this and a Shadow card, and then you can flip monsters up, but it, that's a hard once per turn. So you can't use both effects in the same turn. So it's kind of like just really awkward. But uh, I feel like uh, if you're a, an experienced Shadow player, you can probably make something like this work. Uh, maybe a pure Shadow deck is better. You guys still have access to stuff like Shadow Fusion and like all the works. So I'm sure you guys can figure out something. And then we have World Legacy World Armor, where if a monster is flip summoned, and this is specifically saying flip summon, so this can't be flip face up by a card effect, this has to be flip summon. So it has to be like, it's face down during your main phase and you flip it up. Then he can special summon himself from your hand. And then when he's normal or special summon, he, he can add a World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. And the one that you could add is World Legacy Pawns, because Pawns is basically another Borogard, another Terror Ray. Um, you can target a face down monster you control, change it to either face up attack or face up defense. This one lets you, you know, put it in face up defense. Um, and then it can shuffle crawlers from graveyard back into main deck to book a moon or our monsters. I think I've went, gone through the most of the extra deck. Centaur Amina is something that you can summon off of Floor Knights in case you want to keep the Noble Knight stuff around. So Centaur Mina can actually summon level 2 or monsters from grave, from hand or grave, and she can also negate trap cards once per turn, but only during your turn, just like Chevalier de Fleur. Do with that information what you will. She's also a beast warrior, so she can't be used to make Master of Ham. Then we have a Beast Eyes Pendulum Dragon, where it can be summoned by tributing a beast and a dark dragon. Um, I thought I was cooking with this at first, but then I realized, wait a minute, the only dark dragon I summon is Boro Guard, so I don't think this is as strong in the list, but... Uh, if it destroys a monster by battle, you can inflict damage equal to original attack of the beast type fusion material. So if you use Master of Ham, you can inflict an extra 2,000 when you destroy a monster by battle. If that means anything. I don't think it's as good as Borogard. It's an option because you're playing beast monsters, right? Dragoon and then the Shadow Fusions, which I'm sure you guys are more than familiar with. Now, you know, let's go through some of the other flip monsters that are possible to, to mess around with, right? So... This is a subterra one that mills any card from deck to graveyard. If you can flip this twice, you can do like a transaction rollback thing with like Ghost Meets Girl, where you can just lock your opponent out of special summoning for the turn. Although the deck already has a play for that, like you can do this just in case that play doesn't work. Uh, GL the Weighted Ninja, right? If you guys know the Ninja Trap card that came out in like, what is it, like Photon Hypernova or Darkwing Blast? There's a ninjutsu art where you can tribute a monster your opponent controls that's face down because they can tribute monsters on the field, not just uh, on your field, but on either field to uh, summon out a ninja in face down defense. Oh no, it, it just summons out ninjas in general. Okay, so you tribute a face down monster, you summon a ninja from your deck. And then ninja that you summon is Geo the Weighted Ninja, right? And then Geo can book a moon two more face-up monsters on field 
and then your opponent's monsters that were book and moon cannot activate uh, cannot change their battle position so you can book a moon up to two monsters your opponent controls and then they're stuck i believe even if he leaves a field because it's not a continuous effect it is just a uh trigger on summon that just applies um and then once it's once it's applied it it's applied like permanently and then uh if a monster is flipped face up uh while he's on the field he can target a card of your opponent controls and pop it so this could be a really good strategy like if you quaking mirror force you can pop their monster or daruma cannon pop their monster summon geo and then geo book a moon two more things in case they try to extend off of those book a moon monsters and then we had guardian sphinx right so reason why guardian sphinx is here is because of this funny guy exile <laughs> uh he can only be summoned by tributing a sphinx monster right and that means from hand right because that's how cards were worded back then this card has probably never received a reprint after its structure deck printing okay so we got one reprinting in a world championship pack after its structure deck reprinting and uh it's it still uses the same wording but that means like it can only be summoned from hand so you summon it from hand by tributing a sphinx I hope they added this to say graveyard because then it could be funny. Like I could discard this later on in the game, you know, boom. And there was a whole flip deck using Exod that was like really gimmicky, but like I couldn't use any of the support because they all say when this card is flip summoned, right? Or when, and so none of them are flip monsters. There's a lot of monsters in the game that like activate when they're flip summoned, but aren't actually flip monsters. So it's like pseudo flip monsters. like this guy like guardian sphinx he's not actually a flip monster he just activates when he's flipped summon so the flip summon monsters are not flip monsters they they just work as flip cards they're not even as good anyway like half of them have really mid effects most of them have really mid effects so it's not even like you're losing out on anything but it would be funny if i could summon exot but it, it just doesn't work umastrix can banish a monster our opponent controls on flip and and then we have this like hiding c it, it, they really should have made this a flip monster but basically um if his flip face up during the end phase you can destroy all special summon monsters on field which 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 would really be funny with boro guard because boro guard cannot be shown by card effects regardless so if you flip this up like if you if your opponent special summons a monster you could summon this in face down and then end phase it can flip it can flip itself up and then when it's flip face up during end phase destroy all special summon monsters if um you just set this normally off of something else uh like let's say it, it was a flip monster if you set it off of Ma uh, master of ham you could borrow guard flip it up during your opponent's end phase pop everything you know uh that was summoned this turn right special summon this turn but still that's very funny very funny card i do wish it was a flip card because then it would be perfect for our deck gravekeeper spy right and get extra bodies i don't think it would be good but <laughs> you know um, because I don't think there's other Gravekeeper flip monsters. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think... I think Spy is the only Gravekeeper flip. Oh, and Gravekeeper's Guard. Yeah. There's really no point, right? 2,000 or less defense. That's the whole deck, right? Like, this is 2,000 or less defense. Or 1,500 or less attack. Oh, excuse me. So that's, like, half the deck. Is summon it in... Oh, okay. You can summon it in, like, attack position, too. You could summon Shaman, and Shaman's like a pseudo Necro Valley. I guess I guess it's better than I thought it was. It's better than I thought it was. Like uh, so, you could summon Shaman, which is a pseudo Necro Valley, and then you could also go. This isn't a great keeper. Go for Assailant or Spiritualist. <laughs> oh, this only summons uh, Spellcaster fusions. I mean, I guess you could summon Supernaturalist, right? But Supernaturalist doesn't do anything. But during the end phase, you, you add Necro Valley? Like, what's the point? Now, if you could add Gravekeeper's Inscription, that would be crazy. If you could add, like, any Gravekeeper Spell or Trap card, that would be crazy. Fortunately, I don't think any of the support does that. I don't think uh, Inscription is searchable with the Gravekeeper support. So, yeah. Uh, Spy is a bit flushed. Fossil Dyna, not a flip monster. Could have been funny if it was. There is, surprisingly, some Symphonic Warriors flip cards. There was another one that had a flip effect that summoned another Symphonic Warrior. Um, and then even this one's Pendulum Effect, uh, when you you can flip a Symphonic Warrior as a once per turn. Worm Kurados to add Worm Monsters from deck to hand 
which is cool, I guess. Girgia armor also adds, like Girgias are surprisingly have a good number of flip. Oh wait, this isn't a flip monster, but it its effect is when it's flip face. Okay, that's stupid. I thought this was a flip monster. Anyway, Alistair activates when it's flip, flip, flip face up. So that's cool. Gem turtle, a Nutterton dangle, and this summons base gardener from deck with base gardener's ass. So we're not gonna do that. Rigorous Reaver, each player drops one. Seems fair, right? Summoner of Illusions, which I believe is no longer hit on the list. If you guys want to see a follow-up video with Summoner of Illusions, what the potential Summoner of Illusions could do, let me know in the comment section below because I, I did not know that like it just raw summoned fusions. As a matter of fact, we might play like double, triple fucking Dragoon at this point. And then there's Morphing Jar number two. And this one's kind of like Cyber Jar, except a little more interesting. Well, Cyber Jar is better because Cyber Jar, you actually draw. This one just shuffles and then you excavate. And then every, anything that's not excavated is sent to the graveyard. I guess tier players would love this. Stealth Bird, not a flip card, but you know, inflicts a thousand. Pod of Greed is interesting because it lets you excavate cards from the top of your deck. You get to number of cards your opponent controls and then add one. And then you send the remaining to the graveyard. Tier players would love this if they could resolve it. Turbo Tainted Hot Red GT19. It can become any level tuner. And then it has a quick effect to synchro. And then it can use monsters on your opponent's field too. Actually, if you guys want to see something with this, like, let me know. What's interesting is that like, you could like uh, let them summon a monster and then you could Beauregard flip this quick synchro. Now, obviously would, would I do that over a guard dog? No, but this is funnier, right? Like this is funnier than guard dog. Terrifying toddler of torment. You can send a fiend from deck to grave. Uh, and then when this is sent from deck to grave, you can summon itself and face down defense. Uh, Snowman eater, somehow not a flip monster. I don't know why. Uh, the, it, the decisions as to what counts as flip and what doesn't is really weird. Mecha Bunny, not a flip monster, but this is a this is a 5D's classic. If you played like casually during 5D's, you probably remember this card. Actually, you, you probably didn't even need to play casual. Like I'm sure this was in a list somewhere, right? And then Morphing Jar, right? Still limited. Uh, Cyber Jar, somehow limited. You pop all monsters on field, summon all level four lowers and then uh keep everything you, you draw five basically and then summon all level four or lower monsters and face up attack or face down defense which is really funny but resolving this when your opponent has more cards in hand than you do is like terrible in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, this is a terrible card you're giving your opponent way too much card advantage but this guy to add a equip spell he could add snatch deal i guess right magical undertaker summon out spell casters from grave this can take control of monsters our opponent controls i don't know if it counts as targeting brainjacker also steals monsters our opponent controls but it equips to the monster first so it's kind of like a mini snatch deal so like we have our snatch dealers for flip monsters which is interesting uh, another one who takes monsters and all three of these are like level two, right? Yeah. Why are, why are level two monsters just like taking control of our opponent's monsters? Uh, but this one's only until the end of the turn. It's, it's, it's not as good as the other two, right? Oh no, this one's only until the end of the turn too. So I guess brain jacker is the best one. Cause it's as long as it's equipped. Uh, then we got Raikou, magician of fate. Well, magician of fate's in the list. We don't, you know, I completely forgot about ghost tricks. As a matter of fact, if you want to see a ghost trick follow up to this, let me know in the comment section below. Like what can we cope with ghost tricks? Insect ninja Mitsu or Mitsu the insect ninja. She can summon herself. If you control a face down decision monster. And then her negate is only if you control another ninja, right? If the face down monster is ninja, then she could stop something. Uh, a monster effect but otherwise she's just a free extender that's all she is red eyes insight because i almost thought you could uh, you could send uh the red eye soul to grave to like resolve red eyes fusion but then i was like wait a minute red eyes fusion has to send red eyes black dragon to grave dragoon doesn't say red eyes monster it says red eyes black dragon so you have to send red eyes black dragon you can't send any red eyes monster as dragon substitute dragon effect monster you have to send red eyes black dragon i kind of gave up on that you could still play dragoon thanks to uh summoner of, of illusions you could still dragoon in this list because dragoon can't be destroyed by card effects so that does still work dragoon does still work but the red eyes fusion you probably don't have to play like at all uh guardian chimera because it's like if i ever play a proper fusion spell to summon out master of ham Chimera could fit right in. I was gonna use Crossroad just, you know, in case I wanted some beast eyes. I just go for Crossroads. And then we go Darkness Metal. I almost thought like Darkness Metal could summon in face down defense, but it only summons in face up defense. And then this is an utter prediction princess. Uh it's prediction Prin princess terror wraith. And then it's like the full board, right? So instead of you setting a single monster, you set either the full board 
or you uh, flip up the full board. But it's all at once. Also, she doesn't revive flip monsters at the end of the turn. So I think Terror Ray is, is just better. She, she's not bad either. And if you want to search her, oh wait, it has to be a ritual monster mentioned on the ritual spell. Oh, this doesn't actually mention her. Wait a minute. So you actually can't pre-prep into her. You can pre-prep into Terror Ray, but the uh, ritual spell isn't as good. So you can pre-prep to make Terror Ray more, more consistent, but the ritual spell isn't as good, or you can just use the Bibble to search both, but like it's, you're using a flip monster, a level nine flip monster to resolve that. So it's not as consistent. I guess the question is how many Terror Ray would a viable flip deck play? I guess, I don't know, cross that bridge when we come to it. Baby Raccoons were, was something that I uh, wanted to work with this deck, but they just, they're just too slow. They also don't do a lot. Yeah, without Obedient Schooled Beast, Baby Raccoons, I just don't think are it. So I just decided not to go for them. The Spirit of the Fallwind could add a flip monster from deck to hand. Maybe if we're playing Terror Ray, Bibble pre-prep, then this could be a good card in main. Uh, otherwise, I just don't think this card has much purpose in the deck. It can search the Tadangle that can summon itself, but that's that's kind of not much. Also, she's not a beast, so we wouldn't be able to use her for fusion summon to make ham. It's just a little slow. Mega Hamster's cool. I don't know what we would summon other than Guard Dog. Like, we can just go straight into Guard Dog. We don't need Mega Hamster to summon Guard Dog. Sunset Beat, this is a new TCG exclusive out of Phantom Nightmare, and it only triggers when a monster's flip face down then he gets a pop a card on field so it's only really good going second and then uh if a flip monster is face up you can inflict damage so it could be decent in time but i don't really see this doing too well i mean you do play a decent number of level nine flips so you can inflict like up to 1800 just to get that damage on them every turn so that's cool and then there's time rewinder this one's also out of phantom nightmare it gets to summon itself from hand when a monster is flip face up and then you can change any monster on the field to, to face on defense, including himself. And then when he's flip face up, he can summon a monster from graveyard. You know, it just summons it in defense position. I guess you could choose face up or face down and then change a face of monster from the field to face down defense. So he can flip himself, summon a monster from grave and face on defense and then put himself back face down. So he can like every turn revive a flip monster, which probably could be good in a proper flip deck. But I just, I was already busy enough with what I was cooking with the master of ham already that I, I didn't really find a, find a route for this. But again, if we do a follow up video, I'll try to include time rewinder as well. That's been all for now. Let me know what you guys think about flip decks and Yu-Gi-Oh. This has been a fucking awesome uh, video to uh, theory and to find out, and I'm excited to do more. So subscribe, let me know what other flip monsters you want to see, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one.